Here we're looking at the effects of um, a on y equals a sine x. And the key points to look out for are the maximums. There's a maximum because it's the maximum value of y on this graph. On this, And the graph is the curve. The grid is the axes and lines behind it. And what's the minimum y value? Here's the minimum y value because that's the minimum value of y that this graph hits. And we want to record those in this table. So y equals sine x is the red line and I'm going to keep that there so that I can compare as I change the A value. To change the A value I click on the constant controller which has got a K because the common letter used for a constant in mass is K not because you spell constant with a K. I'm going to change that to 1. I've changed the steps to 1 so that when I go up it's going to go up by 1A. There's one thing we need to do uh, the axes really need to go on the y scale from minus 6 to 6 for these investigations. Now we'll be able to see clearer what's going on. So I've now put it to A2 sine x. What's the maximum? What's the minimum? Uh, it looks about 2, doesn't it? And it looks about minus 2. If you're in any doubt, click on the graph, right click, enter a point on the curve. Any x coordinate will do. I'm going to go for 90 because that looks where the maximum is. Okay, and then I can either simply go view and status box to see how that coordinate changes as I move it and it does look like y is 2 and down here y is minus 2. We also need the x-intercepts. Where does it intercept like American football? To intercept a ball your hands have to move meet the ball. Uh, this graph meets the x-axis at 180. How do I know? Because y is equal to 0. Um, on the x-axis I've neither gone up nor down. I'm just sitting on this line. So y coordinate must be 0. So 180 and 360 and I need to enter those key points into my graph. You see I've also got a text box following that point and that's because I right clicked on it earlier and I chose text box. Let's put those points in now then. So the maximum was 2 and the minimum was minus 2 and the x-intercepts happened when x was 0 because I want the x-coordinates of the x-intercepts 180 and 360. Then you change that. Let's change it to 3. What happens? Record what you see. Uh, it looks like it's 3, minus 3. So I can just copy and paste this into the next row and change the numbers I need to. Have the x-intercepts changed? Let's have a quick look. No, doesn't look like they have, so I don't need to change those. And then you need to make a prediction. So after you've done a few, hopefully you'll see a pattern, and it asks you to make a prediction before going into decimal numbers and negative numbers. Um, so I'm just going to animate this. I click on Options, Animate. I can change the step to changing by 0.1 every time the constant, minus 5 to 5. I can change the speed, OK. And you're going to look at all of this and see what you think is happening. So this is automatically changing because I asked it to animate. You can see the A value here is changing. And you have to decide what's happening um, so that you could predict for anything. Once you've done that, you're then going to have to here explain what you think you've seen, what's happening. And it would be good, maybe, if you could save a family plot. So to do a family plot of all these A sine X types curves, I go to Options, Family Plot, and I want to plot it changing by 1 every time to begin with, the step of 1 from minus 5 to 5. That A is going to change. Um, OK. And look, there are all the different types of graph. Y equals sine X, 2 sine X, 3 sine X. If you right-click on any one of them, and then you can get the text box option. And you can label the graph, OK, this was y equals a sine x when a was 4. OK, and I can put a little arrow pointing to that so I know that that graph there is when a is 4. And you could save this in a special folder called sine and cosine graphs to remind you uh, for later reviewing. The next one you have to do is with um, cosine, fine, same thing. And then you're going to change a different variable. You're going to do sine bx and cos bx. Let me show you the sine bx and cos bx quickly. Cos bx... Don't need that for now. Here's one I made earlier. Uh, and here I'm just changing the value of B. So let me change that. K. Okay. Uh, I've used B instead of A sine X. And if I click on that, there's cos X. The blue line is a normal cos X curve. If I click on that, you see I've written cos equals BX. Y equals cos BX, sorry. And then I can change the B value here to see how that changes the curve. Up to you to decide. Again, don't forget maximum and minimums. How are they changing? And how are the X intercepts changing? record them in the table. 